Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of how to work with electromagnetic radiation, and in particular, we're going to look at laser light. Now, here's a little picture of a laser. We have a laser beam coming out, and the interesting thing about lasers is that the beam doesn't spread out like with a flashlight. With a flashlight, the beam gets wider, and so the intensity gets weaker as you go farther out. With lasers, that's typically not the case. Laser light will maintain its beam, so the intensity doesn't change with distance away from the laser. So, if they ask us, given these parameters, that the power of the laser is 0.5 milliwatts and the wavelength coming out is 633 nanometers, which is a typical red laser, um, and the beam diameter is one millimeter, what is the intensity of the beam and what is the energy density within the beam of this laser? All right, let's start with the intensity of the beam. And we know that I is equal to the power of the source divided by the area over which it spreads. But since the beam doesn't spread, you can then imagine if we take a look at this beam right here, then you have the diameter of the beam, which is equal to one millimeter. So the area of the beam is always the same. It's equal to pi r squared, which is equal to pi times d squared over four. Okay. So using that in our equation, we can then say that this is equal to the power of the source, which is 0 0.0005 watts, because we want to convert that to watts, not milliwatts. And the area then would be pi times the diameter in millimeters, which is 0 0.001 meters. And we have to square that and divide the whole thing by four. And that would be the intensity of the beam, regardless of the distance away from the source. So let's find out what that is equal to. So we have 0 0.0005 divided by pi divided by uh, 0 0.001 squared and then multiply times 4 because if you divide by 1 over 4 that's the same as multiplying times 4 so times 4 equals and the intensity of the beam is equal to 637 watts per square meter. So even though we have a very small power source for the laser since the energy is concentrated on a very thin beam that doesn't spread out, the overall intensity beam is very high, 637 watts per square meter. But now they want us to also find the energy density of this. So by definition, the energy density is equal to uh, the amount of energy contained in the beam per unit volume, and that can be defined as one half epsilon sub naught times E squared plus one half Mu, mu sub naught would, would be one over, one over two mu sub naught times b squared. And you can remain, again remember that half the energy is contained in the electro, uh, the electric oscillations and the or electric field oscillations, and the other half of the energy is contained within the magnetic field oscillations. All right. So how do we find the energy density? <clears throat> well, there's two ways of going about it. First of all, we can use this part of the equation. If the energy coming out of the laser is 0.5, watt, 0.5 milliwatts, then we can say that if we imagine a beam that's gone out for one second, we know the length of the beam, and then we know the volume of the beam, and then we also know how much that energy that contains, we can also calculate it that way. So imagine this. So the beam leaves the laser, and after one second, the beam will now be um, the distance will be equal to the speed of light times the time, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second times 1 second, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters. So the length of the beam after 1 second will be the distance light travels in 1 second, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters in length. If we then also know the cross-sectional area, which is equal to pi d squared over 4, which we did over here in this part of the problem. Then we know what the volume is because then we can say that the volume, let me write over here, the volume is equal to the length or the distance times the cross-sectional area. And then if we not know how much energy is contained within that section of beam, which of course is the amount of energy that leaves every second, and since the energy output is 0.5 milliwatts uh, per second, then uh, we know that it's 0.5 millijoules. So we can then say that U is equal to the energy over V, which is equal to um, 0 0.5 millijoules divided by the volume, which would be the distance times the cross-sectional area. 
and so that would be equal to 0.0005 joules divided by the distance which would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters and then the cross-sectional area would be uh, pi times d which is 0.001 millimeters squared and I might as well put in the units while I'm at it so it would be uh, meters because I convert to meters squared and the whole thing divided by 4 and what will we get out of that? Okay, 0 0.0005 divided by 3e to the 8 times pi. Ah, that's why. 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.0005 divided by 3e to the 8 divided by pi divided by 0 0.001 squared and then multiply times 4 and the energy in that being the energy density is 2.12 times 10 to the minus 6 joules per cubic meter and there you go that's how you calculate the energy density now you could also do it by calculating the electric field oscillations or magnetic field oscillations and then calculating the energy density that way and so why don't we try to do that as well so if we go back and remember what <clears throat> E is related to the intensity, so we can say that the intensity of the beam is equal to 1 over mu sub naught times E times B, and realizing that E is equal to C times B, so B is equal to E over C, so we can say that the intensity is therefore equal to 1 over mu sub naught C times E squared. And so kind of running out of board space here, but let me then come over this way. So I'm going to solve that equation for E, so I can say that E is equal to the square root of I mu sub naught C, and then I can plug that into my equation here. Of course, realizing that if I ignore this part and double up on this energy, because there's the same amount of energy distributed over both of these parts of the term, so we can say that the energy density is equal to epsilon, epsilon sub naught e squared so that would be twice this amount not including that amount and so let's see here hmm maybe I'll be a little bit smarter about it I'm just want to find what e squared is equal to and I'll multiply that times epsilon sub naught so e squared is equal to i times mu sub naught c I don't have to take the square root because in the end I'm going to need an e squared right here and so the intensity uh, where did I find that Right here, intensity was 637 watts per square meter. Mu sub naught was 8.85 times 10 to the minus uh, 12. C was 3 times 10 to the 8. So that gives us E squared. If I now multiply E squared times epsilon sub naught, so multiply this times epsilon sub naught, so then I also have to multiply this times epsilon sub naught, and then I need epsilon sub naught here, which is 8.85. Oh, uh, let's see here. Hang on a second. I got the wrong constant in here. That's the epsilon sub naught constant. This constant is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and the epsilon sub naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Got to be careful about those constants. Okay, so now I think I got it right. I got the intensity, mu sub naught, speed of light, and epsilon sub naught, and that together should give me the energy density of that laser beam. So let's find out if I get the same answer as I got over here. It better be. All right, 637 times 4 times pi times 1 e to the 7 minus times 3 e to the 8. And finally, times 8.85 e to the 12 minus and... I get 2.12 times 10 to the minus 6. That would be joules per cubic meters. And notice that I got the exact same answer as I did before, doing it in a very different way. So finding the energy density of a laser beam can be found by simply taking the energy contained within the beam divided by the volume, or by using this part of the equation. And of course, since we know that half the energy is stored in this part of the uh, oscillations and half the energy is stored in the magnetic field oscillations, we can simply say, take this part, double it, find out what E is equal to in terms of the intensity, and plug in numbers, and you get the same value. And that's how you work with laser beams and finding the intensity 
and the energy density of laser beams.